bad lighting. There is a, a dog between us. Snoring. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Um, Miles is going for a bike ride today, wow. leaving me alone with shitbag number one and uh, shitbag number two. Oh, what is what she's saying? <laughs> and we're going to have a very cosy bookish day. I'll take him for a walk in the woods a little bit later. And um, they're going to be my writing buddies and reading buddies for the day. Ha! Good morning, everyone. It's Jade from Boho Bookworm. It is Preptober. It's time to start planning my next novel. I've got my notes on the go. It's been so much fun getting a story idea together. I'm busy rereading my first novel because this is going to be a sequel. I've got the title. It's called Honey, I'm Home. So I'm just flicking through my book to pick up a few bits that I need to remember uh, in order to write a sequel for it. And I was just going on booktube to catch up on other people's videos when I found a Halloween prep topo write-in with Brooke Passmore and Jessie Elliott. So I'm just gonna go quickly shove myself through the bath, wash my hair, kind of put a bit of a face on to feel a little bit better about myself. And then I am going to have a morning of prepping with them. Um, I haven't watched this video yet, so I'm going to watch it and write and probably just try and vlog it while I do, um, because a lot of you used to love my writing videos. I know they've been really slack. I've been focusing a lot on just getting back into booktube lately, but yeah, writing videos are making a comeback too, I promise. I will be taking part in NaNoWriMo. I'm waiting for the cover of my book, just a mock-up design that I've got going uh, with some girl on Fiverr. She designed the cover of The Pirouette Predator, my other book. And oh, I just, I thought that it was brilliant. So I'll show you the covers of my first two books quickly because, you know, I'm very proud of them. So this is obviously the first one, which I loved. And then the second one is The Pirouette Predator. And the nice thing is that they're both like, they have the same kind of colour schemes. So the third book, Honey, I'm Home, is going to be predominantly red with white and black making an appearance. So I think it might look really, really good and I'm really excited to see what she comes up with. Hopefully I'll have something by the end of the day, but I will let you know as soon as I do. I think it's going to be a good day because my sunflower bloomed. I don't know why I kissed that, that's weird. Anyway, bye time. <laughs> Where am I going? Just about to settle in for the day to do some writing, or well, prepping for my novel I'm starting next month, and I've had the mock-up cover designs come through, so I'm really excited to show them to you, and let me know which one your favourite is, please. I need to make a decision. I'm still not sure if this is going to be the final cover, because I, I really wanted it to be more red. So yeah, they're my two books, right? And I kind of really wanted the third one to be predominantly red, because I thought that that would make a really good contrast of just my three books and kind of complete a really cool set but the covers come back very similar to the pirouette predator and i'm not sure let me know what you think of it and um there's two options so let me know which one your favorite is i'm very excited to show you and i'm very excited to start writing this book come november it's only a couple of days away <sighs> also i don't like how like fingerprinty it is with the, the black it kind of irritates me a little bit like i think Someone touched this, you had honey. So this is the first one. This is the one that my boyfriend really likes. Obviously I haven't paid for it yet, so it's still got the shutter stock image on it. Um, it's a little bit gothic-y, and I, I am really interested in getting more of a red front cover, otherwise I feel like it might be a little bit too similar to the Pirouette Predator, my second book. So there's between that one and this one. So you see the difference. That's the other one. That's one my boyfriend really likes. And that's the other one. So let me know which one you like. I mean, the, the story is winter, snowing, cabin in the woods, home invasion, right? 
So this one is more of a cabin. That's what his mum was saying last night, that she likes this one a little bit more, I think. Um, I also feel like the comma should be a little bit more over there. It's annoying me on top of the end for some reason. It's little things that piss me off, apparently. But yeah, that's what I've got so far. Let me know which one your favourite is. I'm really excited. Right, so like I said, let me know which one out of those two is your favourite. Now I'm going to crack on, carry on with my uh, planning and get this story idea brewing in my head. Having the cover just makes everything so much more exciting and I get such like motivation, inspiration and like cause I just can't wait to hold the manuscript in my hand and have that bound up in a book. Oh, such a cool, cool feeling. Sometimes being a writer just makes me very happy. Sometimes it devastates me and pisses me off, but sometimes it is good. <laughs> so Miles, yeah. what do you think of my new book cover? You haven't decided which one yet. I know, but which one? You, you like the one with the white more, but not if it... The one in the snow rather than the fog. Yeah, because that matches the, the premise of my book more. What do you think of the premise of my book, Miles? Oh God, sorry for this. <laughs> really good. Really good. You haven't really told me a lot. I've said it's a home invasion yeah. um, and it's about a sociopath who gets basically stalked by another sociopath. Oh, we're well, not talking about it. Yeah, because you always hear all these stories about like normal people getting completely um, like fucked up in life by a sociopath. But what about sociopaths getting fucked up by another sociopath? Yeah, what the chances are. Eh? <laughs> yeah, they finally get what's coming to them. Karma. It's a home invasion. It's going to be epic. It's going to be the scariest book I've ever written. But you still refuse to watch horror movies with me. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Holy shit. So, I know it's early, but I have just written absolute gold. And it is what is it, like the 25th of October, I think? I have no idea what day it is. Days of the week don't really mean anything to me anymore, working in a pub. But uh, yeah, I plan on writing a lot more than 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo, I'm still going to try to hit the 50,000 word target. But I think I've been saying this for a while. I really want to write a book that is at least double that, so 100,000 words. And I've just been... Even my boyfriend said to me, like, I have been like staring blankly and not really with him in the mornings because I have just been like so ready to start writing and getting this book out of me and I just can't wait until November 1st anymore. So I started and I've just written down by hand the first um, two and a bit pages of chapter one, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not good at all. But uh, I'm going to read it to you and let me know what you think. This is draft one, so it will surely change. Let me just prop that up over there. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. There we go. I look exhausted, but that's what writing does to you. Um, oh, I feel the need to celebrate. The little bit that I've written so far says... I stare numbly at the blank canvas before me, the cotton fabric stretched across the wooden frame tantalising me. Drops of inky black watercolour paint land on my knee from the bristles of the brush. There are hundreds of my paintings surrounding me, some hanging crookedly from the wall, others propped up against one another wherever they'll fit. Haunted eyes, mouths silently screaming, mouths silently screaming, or gasping for air. This is the first time I'm reading this back, by the way, so I have no idea what I've written, to be honest. I just kind of like gushed it all out of me. So, um, haunted eyes, mouths silently screaming, or, or gasping for air, clenched fists with veins almost popping, burst into life throughout the room. 
This is what is in my head. My fucked up, neurotic, crazy head. Usually, it's easy to get whatever's inside of me out onto the canvas. But not today. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. I throw the paint... I throw the paintbrush to the floor in bubbling irritation. Splatters of black go trailing across my floorboards. I don't care. Forcing myself out of my rickety wooden chair, I head out of my studio and into the lounge. The bookshelf sags under the weight of countless paperbacks. Each and every one of the covers artwork has been designed by me. Making pins and needles in my foot. Yeah. I pluck one of the books from the shelf and blow a layer of dust from it. On this one, I have the silhouette of someone standing with a knife in their hand. Sharp branches from the, from the trunks of trees threaten the edges of the cover. A waxing crescent moon, sharper than the blade, illuminates the piece. This is one of, this is one of my more subtle works of art. I paint what's in my head, you see. Things that have spoken aloud would certainly have me taken away in a straitjacket. And I can't risk that again, can I? Connecting with horror writers from all around the globe has been fascinating. Their minds are as sadistic and warped as mind, really. Though what is in their heads isn't real, what's inside me, much to my detriment, is. I often wonder where that line is drawn. The line between what is normal and what isn't. Sanity and insanity. It is so thin, so narrow. I remember the days I knew exactly where that line was, when I knew right from wrong. That defining moment where you understand boundaries that should never be crossed. But when you take that step over the edge, it changes everything. Your whole world is upturned and you can never, ever take it back. I also wonder if any of the authors I work with are in fact like me. The question has been on the tip of my tongue during correspondence so many times. Sometimes it's a struggle not to just ask them Sometimes it's a struggle not to ask them bluntly where they get their ideas for these horrific tales they tell. Yet I always manage to reel myself back in. So that's what I've written so far, and I plan on writing a little bit more before I pack this away for the day. Ah, I'm loving writing again. I always have to take a bit of a break between writing, and I've taken a break for July, August, four or five months now. So I've been yagging to get back into writing, and this is the first thing I have written, fiction-wise, since the publication date of The Pirouette Predator. Let me know what you think. And if I write any more, I will uh, probably read it out to you. Okay, so I'm just about to go out on a friend date. So just before I do, I wanted to read you the last little bit of what I wrote. It's not much, don't worry. It says, It's as I'm loading the hearth with kindling and coal that I hear a thud by the front door. I peer outside at the fine rain starting to coat my window pane. I can't make out who the figure is that has just dropped something through my letterbox. I get the fire blazing, then retrieve the slip of paper from the welcome mat. I drop it like it's burnt me the second that I've read it. It reads, or I don't know, it says maybe, sounds better. Oh my darling girl, you picked the wrong guy to fuck with this time. You deserve everything that's coming your way. So let me know what you think of the start of novel number three. I have been reading novel number one and I am mortified because I had no idea how many typos and shit was still in that book. I swear, I'm going to save up this time and afford a proper editor because I, no, I need to take more pride in it. And I, the thing is, I'm so meticulous in stuff, I just can't believe that I've picked up so many things and like I switch between past and present tense quite often in my writing and that annoys me and it's obviously where I've like written something and then stopped and then picked it back up later but it like I, I don't know how to describe it but I just change 
my writing. And I don't like that. Like, you know, instead of going, it feels like something, I say, it felt like something, you know, like felt or feels. I don't, I'm not the best writer in the world. Uh, just a lowly thriller indie author who's still trying to get her shit together. So yeah, I don't really know how to describe that, but I have noticed that I can make that mistake sometimes and it's annoying and I need to figure out how to stop doing that. For everyone who has read my first book, It Was You, I do apologise for the amount of typos and mistakes that are in it. I don't even have the original copy of the manuscript to go back and edit. I'll have to rewrite the entire bloody thing. Ugh. Anyway, time for a friend date and to forget about writing for a little bit because yes. life, life's calling. See you guys later. Matt.